Um, hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. I'm Nathan Sobek with Sobesource.com. Um, today we're going to cover um, in a little bit of depth, not everything possible, but layer masks. What they're good for and a few ways of using them. So let's dive right into this. Uh, first of all, I am using Photoshop CS5. Um, with latest and greatest. So, but, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our thumbnails for our layers to large so you can see them a little bit better. Plus, if you didn't know there's options there, there is. Just make sure you don't click on these or you get different options. So, yeah. Okay, so this, let's get started. First, I'm going to show you a picture. Um, and in this picture, um, Without a layer mask, well, first let's uh, double click this to give it a layer name so it's editable. Untake this lock off. Layer zero, that's fine. So we're going to crop out this image. Um, one way of doing it would be to use your uh, polygon tool. Uh, if you're going to do it like this, this is what. I'm gonna sh okay. Do this real fast and get do this real well. In here, double click. If I press delete, now it's it's cropped out. Control D to deselect. Oh, that's look how square that is. That's that's horrible. I can't live with that. So let's uh, Control Alt Delete to undo. Control Alt Delete to uh, excuse me. Control Alt Z, which is undo or step backwards. Um, so let's show you what a layer mask can do. Because if you did it that way, you can't you can't bring it back. You can't rework it. You know, like once you delete it, it's gone. It's it's gone. So um, here's another way of doing it. So we're going to a Control D to deselect. Make sure your layer you want to work on is selected. Hit your layer mask. Add a layer mask. Now layer mask is pretty simple. Basically, what it does is make sure is black. If you select a brush, anywhere you paint black, it disappears. Let's change the hardness level up a little bit. So any place you paint with black, it's cut out. I can actually go in here. Hold down Alt. Use your scroll wheel to zoom in. Your space bar to move around. And your bracket keys to change your brush size. You can come in here and just kind of work this out. Like, oh, I messed up. So, um, like, what's cool about using your uh, layer mask is that you can switch over to white and color it right back. So, um, so there's no destruction going on. Um, now, you're not limited to the brush tool. You can use this any way you can really think of as far as the other tools go. So, like, I could go back to my polygon tool or my lasso tool and I can come in here and select this. Get it close so I can do a large area quickly. Double click. Then, but instead of delete, I'm going to hit Shift F5 to fill up my foreground color, which needs to be black since I've got it in the background. We'll use the uh, background color. See? Control D to deselect. Now, this is a little rough, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch, make sure our white's still selected. Go back to our brush. We're going to soften the edges a little bit. Come down here. Oops. Control D. Hold down Alt again to zoom in to our area. And we're going to paint with white to bring it back. Hold down the space bar and click to move until we, until we get a happy edge. Now you can use your black again. Switch over to black to paint away what you don't want. I could go through this real fast. Oops, see I messed up. Switch over to white. 
Go back. Color it back in. It's that fast. You can go back through and continue on. Just until you get the results you're happy with. And clear it all out. And you can run through the whole thing. Now I'm not going to run through the whole thing. I just want to show you how, how it can be used. Now I've actually used this picture. The reason why I chose this picture to show you this is because I've actually done this. And with this picture, I have actually... I'll show you something I've done with this picture. I have actually taken this picture and turned it into this. Yeah, I know. Not great. It's kind of a cliche, but it's funny. But um, I did it using layer masks. There you go. That's, that's one thing you could do with it. Now, something else that you may or may not know, you can also use layer masks to do perspective blurs. Oops, that's not what I want. What am I doing? I want to use this because we want to do a perspective blur. So, the first is double click on our image. Layer zero, that's fine. And I'm going to remove the background, but you don't have to. Because, but I, th I think it's going to be cleaner for what I want to show you. So I'm going to use my uh, magic selector tool, make sure my continuous is selected. Click the white, hit delete. Background's gone. Now, I'll make sure my image is selected. I'm going to add a layer mask to it. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to do a, 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 a blur, like a, a perspective blur. So like this, is, so like this here, I'm going to be you know, sharp as it is, and then it blurs as it goes away from the camera. So the way this works is you can use a filter called uh, lens blur, and you're allowed, uh, and you can use a uh, on the image for reference for the blur from a layer mask. This works using a gradient. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to set my gradient tool, and now yeah, anything that paints in black disappears. Anything that's painted in white is stays, and it works the same way for the filter. So anything that's going to be black is going to be blurry. So anything that's white is going to be in focus. So you're going to use a gradient tool, and you can use black to white, or black to you know transparent. Um, it would do the same; it wouldn't make any much difference. I like black to transparent, and I'll show you why. Make sure my layer mask is selected. Uh, make sure it is clear to black. If you know if black is what you want back here, you can also reverse it so that it would be black first and then clear. That's going to do the opposite. So anything you see is going to be sharp. Anything that's transparent is going to be blurry. And the and the fade between the two is going to be based upon your gradient. Okay. So let me control D to to uh, to re to undo that. And I'm going to reverse. And I'm going to click and drag. So everything you see is going to be sharp. Everything that's Transparent is going to be blurry. Now, once we've done that, make sure you select the uh, picture you want to apply the filter to, because the filter is going to apply to the picture it's selected. You don't want to put a blur on your gradient, although you can, um, but that's what the gradient's for, or your layer mask. So we're going to make sure that our picture is selected, because that's what we want to apply the filter to. So we're going to go to Filter. We're going to Blur. I'm going to go to Lens Blur. Now, I've already got it selected here because I've done it before. But if you don't have a depth map source selected, this is going to blur the whole thing. But we can select the layer mask that we made. It'll actually use that gradient. Um, invert so that this is sharp and it fades away. You can actually change the focal distance to make it more blurry. Or you know to move it so that it goes the opposite way. Or bring it back in to go back the way we want. You can change the radius. All kinds of little cool little stuff in here. I'm gonna soften that back, actually. I'll click OK. <clears throat> That's gonna apply it to this. Now we can't see it because the layer mask is still applied, but now we don't need the layer mask because we were just gonna use it for you know the perspective um, for the filter. So you can either you know just disable it if you want to save it, but I'm done with it, so I'm just gonna delete the layer mask. Now you can see that it's already applied. So I'll just add our background back in. I'm gonna hit. First, I'm going to make sure white is my foreground. 
Shift F5, use my foreground color, hit OK. Now my background's back and I have a nice perspective. So there's a couple of things you can do with uh, layer masks. Um, I think, um, I hope that I've explained them relatively well and still going fast to you know, not take up too much of your time. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to leave some in the comments or email me. Um, I will do a revision to try to answer any of your questions. I hope this helps you understand layer masks a little bit more. Um, it is a phenomenal tool in Photoshop. Very, very useful. Um, it's non-destructive, which is the best part about it. So you can always bring them back. I mean, because you may think you're done with them, and then you decide, oh, i got to redo the whole thing because I want to go a different direction with it. Um, use it to layer mask. You can go back, color it back. It never happened. Um, you know, change it. I'll blend one photo into another. Um, I'm using it for mosaics. Um, I'm using it for cutting out things. It's great. So happy photoshopping and um, just be sure to play around there's all kinds of stuff you can do with photoshop and there's no one way you can do the same effect a couple of a couple other different ways um, layer max or layer masks are just simple um, very easy to use very powerful so this is Nathan Sobek with sobesource.com I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, happy photoshopping